Okay, who's the next one? Ah, Mr. Kingroom. As I have the list of issues from my previous model, I hope most of them are fixed by now. I will check them one by one and at the end of the video we will see if your grade will be approved. Hello. We will go back to the classroom later, but first a small recap. I already did a review of the Kingroom KLP1 CD printer which uh, amazed me for uh, so low price how many functions we get. Linear rails on all three axes, a fully enclosed printer, a 300 degrees Celsius on the nozzle which is hardened, clipper base. So basically it is ready for technical filaments too, for extremely low price. But since this is a quite new type, Score XY printer for the King Rune, it has uh, several issues and I had that feeling that it is not completely finished. So that's why I'm excited a little bit with uh, this printer, because we have the same or similar model, but newer version, and usually those issues should be fixed by now, but uh, we will see that soon. That's why I decided to have this topic of the video. And of course, in the second part, I will check the print quality with different materials. You have to be careful because according to this user manual it says that I turn on the printer and configure the network but uh, you cannot do this until it's fixed. So first actually you have to follow these instructions to remove some securing bolts and similar. We don't really have the assembling here only we have to remove the securing bolts from the Y, X and the two on the Z axis. After this mounting the doors and the top acrylic glass and mounting the spool holder on the back side. A quick overview before we go back to the class. This is the back side of the printer, the switch and the power plug, the spool holder, and again we don't have nice tangential entering into the filament sensor. This may cause some problems with the brittle filaments, carbon fibers and similar. And again, I don't really understand, this should just hang here because I cannot see any solution to attach to this uh, filament sensor. I can see that the ceiling is not completely perfect, but uh, not a deal breaker, it will be fine. But I, uh, what I don't really like here, that uh, this Teflon tube and cable will rip against the top acrylic glass. Inside it used the linear rails on X and Y axis. On Z axis it used this, I think, 12mm linear rods and this uh, lid screw which support this bed on the one side. This is two-sided texture PI sheet, but it doesn't have any support on the back side, so you have to be careful how will you insert it back. But the good improvement is that it has now two 35 millimeters in X and Y direction, so this means they have the same size like and the three or similar sheets. Now, a big change compared to the previous model that, that these side panels are now already installed, but they are not transparent, so we have only these two acrylic glasses, but they are quite dark, so it will be very hard to see anything inside. And I cannot see any LEDs or cameras added to this printer. The maximal opening angle on the doors, and on the top cover, it will be good to have some kind of supports in this position. Let's start with positive things. It has a linear rails on X and Y, clipper base, accelerator built-in extruder, fast printer, 300 degrees Celsius on the nozzle, 100 on the bed, and the nozzle is from the hardened steel, so it is really ready for technical filaments. That's correct. Now the print area from 210 mm in X and Y, now we have 230 mm in X and Y, but on the Z we have still 210 mm. Okay, I understand that we, now you can use the sheets from the NS3, but on the Z you should follow this 230 millimeters. And by the way, today's standard is now move a little bit higher, so 256 millimeters cubic maybe, or you can even move higher, 300 millimeters cubic. <laughs> Always that price, okay, I agree with this. Let's continue. Spool on the back side of the printer. Now, Mr. King, please stop copying others, okay? If the other place the spool holder on the back side of the printer, it doesn't mean it's good, okay? Place it on the side, on the top, or, or give the user option to place it wherever he wants. Teflon tube cannot be connected to the filament sensor. Why? Okay, but uh, it looks weird, then it just flanks there. <laughs> not the duct tape, please. I was hoping that I will not get this answer. And remember, entering to the filament sensor must be tangential, not in the center, because uh, if the filament bends, some carbon fiber filament will break easily. Okay, so always enter to the filament sensor must be tangential from the spool. Now let's continue. Teflon tube and extruder cable with drag on the top cover. This was the issue with the previous printer too. Add some drag chain or something like that, it would be much nicer. <laughs> Again, this price, okay. 
aligning of the bed plate. When we are placing it back, it will be much easier if we have some aligning pins or something like that, and we don't have to guess if the position is correct. Okay, it's not a deal breaker, but it would be much nicer. I mean, small thing which doesn't raise the price, but the feeling would be much better for the user. Small gap on the edge of the acrylic glass. I, I agree, the temperature inside is good, even with the previous printer, so it's, this is not an issue. Now, again, screen is covered. Why is it sealed inside the printer? <laughs> I know it is clipper. Yes, we can attach a phone or, or laptop, but you know, if we have that screen there, then from time to time I would like to use it to check the I know, remaining time or something like that. Yes, with the PLA the door is open, but if I print ABS, then it is closed and I don't want to open it just to see some status on the screen. Plex is too dark and it is still hard to see inside. I was asking for some transparent acrylic glass here. At least add LED or camera. <laughs> Again, that price. Okay. From the software size, the different language is still in China's. Yes, it is easier to change, but uh, paper friction for the Z offset. Yes, okay. Um, I like this method. I don't have issue with this, but beginner users don't really like this method because uh, there is always the possibility for the human error. Now, again, this was discussed last time. No quite standby position. Why? I mean, if it is not in use, then all those fans shouldn't work and it should have style and style by position. Uh, clipper is not completely finished. I could see still some issues. Yes, rotation distance was correct now because uh, I had some problems last time with this. Slicer is not completely optimized. When? Okay. Screen is not capacitive but resistive, you know, so it would be much nicer for today young users are get used to the smartphones and they like better the capacitive touch screen. And this stylus, come on, it's 2024. Nozzle is covered by fan shroud and it would be good to have nice view to the nozzle, at least with PLA printing, because in that case the doors are opened. Okay, Mr. Kingro, be honest with me. Why are you in this school or in my class? Do you just need a paper diploma or you want to learn something? Uh huh, okay. But most of these issues are not solved by now. Ah, yes, okay, let's see how it prints. Let's start with PLA. I still have some Kingroom PLA from my previous review video. I'm inserting this into Teflon tube and I have no other solution. I'm using the duct tape. I'm doing some calibration, setting the Z offset, uh, outer leveling, and after this, the input shaping. According to Colos, not bad, but 3 mm difference between front and back side. Now let's start with the printing. The fast bench was the prepared G code, and this printer screams for LED lights. I started with the printing, and this was printed in approximately 18 19 minutes. The noise from half meter distance, 66 decibels. The first attempt failed. I can see on the bottom surface that the Z offset was too high. After this, I lowered the Z offset, and from now on, all bed adhesion was good. Bed already cooled down, I wasn't here. Okay. On the first layer, I can see that it would go a little bit lower with the Z offset. The overhang came out great, so the parkouring is good. Also, this back window is rounded. No other issues, maybe I noticed a few smaller holes here on the top, so probably it has only one or two covering layers, <laughs> optimized for the speed. But no other issues with this bench. It's time to prepare the slicer, and in my case the USB drive was missing, but I found a good profile for older KRP1, so I imported it into Pusha Slicer. The only thing I changed here is the surface in X and Y direction, which is 230mm now. And I uploaded the first job over this uh, Fluid user interface, and in this case it will be a calibration cube, which is some kind of this size. The printing was okay without any problems, but uh, as you can see the LED lights are really mandatory for this printer. Until it's hot, it sticks good to this texture PI sheet, and when it cools down... No noticeable ghosting on this object, so the input shaping works great. My next test object is this gear bearing. I'm using it very often because if it is printed accurately, it will rotate immediately after I remove it from the build plate. But in this case, it stuck a little bit, so I had to use a little bit force. And only after this, it started to spin, but not too smoothly. 
And the next object is a longer printing, this all from my CD scanning video. This will be approximately 3 hours printing. I wasn't even here. The owl looks good from each side. Only here on the top I could see a little bit more stringing between two parts, but it is also a very cleanable thing. Next object is also a longer printing, more than 5 hours. And I can see the bed leveling, because it uses a little bit bigger surface area. And also I can see the retraction, this is really torture for these printers. And then I noticed actually that this top cover sits on the spool. So I had to place some object to avoid this. During the printing I noticed that this bed moves up and down. And this is because that auto leveling works great, but I think this 1.5 mm on this area is a little bit too much. Also I noticed that this will be a very big problem when I print inside the enclosure, because this top cover will sit on this Teflon tube and this cable. It's printed in the five and a half hours. I wasn't here, the bed completely cooled down, but uh, even now it produced quite big noise. 50 to 53 decibels in standby position. This is way too much. But the printing is perfect, absolutely no stringing. Well, actually, on this side only I notice a little bit more stringing, but very cleanable thing. So far so good, let's try some PETG. Yes, I will leave the doors open. And now I am inserting this Erivan PETG in this yellow color. And I want to print this Gerber ring, which I scaled up to 150% to see if it will work immediately after the printing. Another smart thing, the unload button works this time, but it doesn't retract enough, so the filament is still engaged between the gears, so I have to use the retract button several times. It is very important under what angle you will cut that end of the filament, otherwise sometimes it can end uh, next to the gears. The filament was successfully changed, and the printing was without any problems. Until it's hot, it sticks very good to this PI sheet. And when it cools down, it is removable with some flexing. Ah, no. Again, with some force, I could free it. It rotates, but not too smoothly. And now let's print some ABS. Of course, I know that it has to be closed, and I know that we cannot see too much now because this acrylic glass is too dark. And now let's print some ABS, and this is glass fiber version by Bamboo Lab because this printer is equipped with hardened steel nozzle. And since it didn't arrive with the tweezers, I will print one from this material. Because of this bending, I can feel a little bit more friction here. And this is why I mentioned that it has to be tangential entering into the filament. Or this can be under this angle, for example. This is preview in a slicer, and I added here these <laughs> Mickey Mouse ears, because I don't use the brim. Here you can see my cooling settings, and these are the temperatures. And in first attempt, I will not use the glue stick on this pin surface. Now let's try to see something inside. Ah, with this it is quite visible. But without light? <laughs> Same from the top. By the way, I measured the temperature, there is a sensor. And without the light, <laughs> no chance to see anything. And the temperature inside, uh, 55 degrees Celsius so far. One big advantage if it is printing inside the enclosure, it is much quieter, 7 or 8 decibels. That's a big difference. The printing is almost finished, 94%, and I'm using my daughter's tablet because I cannot see anything on this screen. It's finished and immediately I want to check the bed adhesion. Oh, it is very good. I wait until it completely cools down. And by the way, I cannot feel so strong smell of this glass fiber ABS by Bamboo Lab. I forget to mention in the review video of it. The bed cooled down. Perfect. And now this printer has a tweezers too. And for the short moment, it can even touch the nozzle. Okay, Mr. Kingroon, just to summarize, I can see some improvements, but most of the issues are still here. Yes, it prints good for Exus, that, that's another question, and it has great price, that's clear. Mm, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, okay, let's say from 1 to 5, I can give you grade 3. Mr. Creality FSR, please be quiet. I will see you next week, you're the next one. Okay, I hope we all learned something today. I will see you next week. Thank you for being here, as dismissed.
Thank you, Professor Igor. As you can see a little bit different video, but I really try to point out that this is a budget-friendly functional printer for technical filaments too, but it is so close to be a good functional printer for technical filaments. All those small details I mentioned wouldn't cost much more in the manufacturing process, but definitely this printer could step up on the 3D printing market. And I'm talking not only about the hardware side, but also about the software, especially the slicer profiles. So, uh, which actually worked for me is a profile which was developed by the users for the previous model. Only I modified the size to 230 millimeters in X and Y, and it works perfectly now on this printer with the Prusa slicer. But everything should be prepared by the manufacturer. If you have some other experience, write me a few lines down in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy printing!